Uh, hello, everyone, uh, and welcome to the 4.30 session of the Virtual Roundtable Web Conference. In this session, we're happy to introduce a presentation, uh, Online Conversations in Escape Room Games. And our speaker is Graham Stanley. Uh, Graham is uh, the British Council's English for Education Systems Lead for the Americas. He's editor of Remote Teaching for British Council 2019, author of Language Learning with Technology for Cambridge University Press 2013, and co-author of the Digital Play Computer Games and Language Aims uh, with Delta Publishing 2011. So, and Graham is also newsletter editor with Altafel Learning Technologies SIG. So Graham, welcome. And uh, without further ado, uh, let's begin the session. Thank you very much, Boshika. I'm hoping yeah. everybody can hear me okay. Please let me know if that isn't the case in the chat. I'll, I'll monitor the chat as things are going along. So in this workshop, um, this workshop is about escape room games and how to do them live online, particularly thinking of students who are at home and teachers who have to teach them. Um, and so the first part of it, I will be playing an online escape room game with everybody, hopefully, and I'll be looking for volunteers. Um, so I will need some of you to unmute your mics as we go along uh, to participate in the game, because I think with this experiential learning is the best way of showing how it works. And then in the second part of the workshop, I'll be looking at, um, at how you can go about designing your own um, online escape room game in a, similar to the one I've done here. Um, and then I'll be taking questions and comments and people can share their own experience of this if they've had any. So that's what I'll be doing. Um, right, so Bochica mentioned some of this, so I won't spend much time, but basically a lot of my experience with did technology has been through escape, uh, been through computer games, which is uh, something I'm particularly fond of. And um, some of the ideas that I'll be looking at today are adapted from um, ideas that were in a book that I produced, uh, wrote with a co-author, Kyle Moore, called Digital Play. A lot of those ideas were based on using escape room games or similar types of games in the classroom, but the actual escape rooms, the computer games. And I think the first thing I would like to do before going any further, and I'll ask you to put in your responses in the chat, is to let me know what you think an escape room is. Is there anybody here who does not know what an escape room is? So, what is an escape room? Uh, so that I can Take, uh, some of your questions and your comments. So what is an escape room? Put your answers in the chat. And also, if you could write in the chat, if you have experienced an escape room, that would be good. And then particularly, if you have done an escape room or some kind of escape room activity with students as well. I'm getting some answers now. Sharon says, you answer questions, get out of the room. Jim says a breakout room. Some people have never done one. Some people have uh, done live escape room games. Paul, not surprisingly, has said that he's done an escape room game, physical and in VR. And Matt says, it's a physical or virtual room that you escape from. And she, he did the Harry Potter one online with kids. So yes, um, an escape room is a game in which uh, you could define it as a game in which a team of players cooperatively discover clues, solve puzzles, and accomplish tasks in one or more rooms in order to accomplish a goal, usually involving escaping from a room, but it doesn't have to be. It could be breaking into... Um, a chest or a, a box uh, in a limited amount of time. Now, escape room 
games uh, started as video games. It was a genre of video games that was uh, very popular and still is to a certain extent. In 2003, a live escape room game called The Dungeon was opened in Indianapolis in the US. And this was followed by escape room games opening in Japan and other parts of the US. And then in 2011, um, as far as people can tell, the first European escape room game opened in Hungary. And after that, there was an explosion of live escape room games. In 2019, for example, there's an estimated 50,000 uh, escape room games worldwide. And live escape rooms uh, have also become popular with teachers who have turned their classrooms into escape rooms. And I've done presentations on, on that because that's something I particularly like the idea of. It, it involves students in embodied language, uh, lang language learning. And I think it can be particularly interesting uh, and can be a very memorable experience, which is what I think we all need to create as teachers. We need to create memorable experiences for our learners. Now, because of COVID-19, I decided to revisit this idea of a, a live listening escape room game for English learners. And this is what I'll be doing, showing you today. For this workshop, I'm going to need uh, some active volunteers to use their microphones uh, and who are happy to play through an example game. So perhaps those of you who are happy to do that, maybe you could just take the microphone now and introduce yourself and say, say your name, where you're from, and say that you'd like to be a player at the moment. Otherwise, it's going to be a very quiet presentation today. So any volunteers? Don't be shy. I'm presuming um, Josh has just volunteered. Great. I'm presuming you can um, unmute yourself, Josh. Can you can you do that and just introduce yourself? And Kirsty as well. Right. Hi, Kat. I've got Josh, Kirsty, Eleni who would like to play and Sharon, but they're muted. Could you, or maybe I can, um, let's have a look. So let's start with you, Josh, see if I can unmute you. Yeah, I'm, I'm good now. Great. Well, my end anyway, <laughs> can you hear me? <laughs> yeah, I can hear you fine, Josh. Nice to hear you again. Great, do you want to just introduce yourself? To your Josh. Oh, sorry, yeah, okay. My, I'm, I'm Josh and I'm a, a teacher and uh, in Bilbao, uh, Spain, doing quite a lot of teaching online. Um, and I'm a technology enthusiast as well, I guess, but probably rubbish at escaping. Well, we'll see. We'll see. Kirsty. Good afternoon. Ready? Hi, Kirsty. Good to speak to you again. Do you want to introduce yourself? Um, yeah, my name's uh, Kirsty. I live in Tenerife in Spain. Uh, I'm a private academy owner. And yeah, that's it, basically. Um, I've, done okay. escape, I've done escape rooms before. I've done live ones. Uh, I've done them in class, but only ones that I've downloaded and printed for, to do in class because it was quick. Uh, and I did one in Budapest last year, which was very good. Excellent. Great, thanks, Kirsty. Eleni, are you able to speak now? Eleni, Eleni. I'll move on. Rivathi. I'm sorry, I'm clicking on unmute, 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 but I can't unmute her for some reason. Okay, not to worry. Rivathi. How about you? And now she's unmuted. Oh, finally. Okay, Eleni and Ravathi, do you want to in introduce yourselves? Oh, hello. I'm Eleni. I'm an English language teacher from Greece. And I've only just found out about these escape rooms. I find them absolutely fascinating. I saw the recording of uh, your webinar with uh, Jamie Keddy on Lesson Stream. And uh, I didn't know that this stuff was out there. So I'm really happy to be here today. Are you also restricted of uh, starting your webcams, everyone? 
Shall I try to switch? Oh, to yeah. Time? Okay, that seems to work <laughs> at least. <laughs> yeah, it would be nice to have a game. Oh. Four yeah. of you. <laughs> Great. So we've got Ravathi next, the next volunteer, and then Sharon. Sharon and Ravathi, do you want to introduce yourselves? Well, shall I go if Ravathi isn't ready yet? Yeah, go ahead, Sharon. Okay. So I'm Sharon. Um, I work in Italy, in Verona, um, and I teach at the University of Verona. And I have never experienced escape rooms, so it'll be an exciting new learning experience for me. <laughs> well, I hope so. I hope so, Sharon. Thank you. What about Ravathi? And then I think we'll get going. Don't be shy, Ravathi. Are you able to speak? Okay. Um, but we'll get we'll get going anyway. And yeah. Ravathi, Can you hear me now? Yes. Yeah. I'm Ravathi. I'm from India. I'm a teacher trainer and ELT consultant. Okay, sorry, I mispronounced your name there. Ravuti, is that it's right? It's okay. <laughs> yeah, I've never used to escape room. Okay, so this is yeah. an interesting group we have here. So um, I think let's move on. Um, right. Here we go. So here's the beginning. Uh, what I'll probably do is is have some commentary as well as we uh, as we're playing it is what you would do with students. But I'll start by just reading the description that you would uh, read to students. So this is the beginning of the game. So you can't remember what happened to you, only that you fell asleep and started to dream about a strange place where you were trapped and needed to escape. When you woke up, you didn't recognize where you were. So you wake up in the middle of a small room. It's dark and there are no doors and no windows. A wooden chair stands in the middle of the room. You're with a group of friends. What do you want to do? Any windows? No windows, no doors, Kirsty. All there is in the room, there's no obvious way out. All there is in the room is this wooden chair. Is it totally dark or can we see something? It's a bit dark, but you can see the chair and the, the walls. You could go and investigate the walls and the floor a bit more. You could have a look at the chair. Does anyone Maybe. want to sit on the chair? <laughs> <laughs> how, many, how many people are there in the room? Um, let's see, there's Josh, there's Kirsty, there's, there's only the people that have, uh, that introduced themselves. That's the only people. You're a group of friends. I think it's about five of you now. Uh, can you pick up the chair? You walk over to the chair, Kirsty, to see if you can pick it up, but you don't seem to be able to pick it up because it seems to be attached to the floor in some way. Mm. Um, shall we try sitting on it? Yeah. Josh, you, you're very brave and you sit I'm on not, the chair. I'm, I'm suggesting maybe somewhere Nothing else happens. to try sitting on it. No, I don't think you can suggest someone else does something. I think. <laughs> okay, I'll you're sit on it then. You're probably going to do something. I'm assuming you're going to do it, okay? Yeah, you sit on the okay. chair, nothing happens. Uh... Maybe we should uh, take a look at the walls, hmm. see if there's a, a switch or something. Okay, who's taking a look at the walls? Huh? Eleni. <laughs> Eleni, you move over to the wall. Um, it's pretty much as I described it. It's very plain. There doesn't seem to be any, there's no windows, no doors. You move to the next wall, the same. There doesn't seem to be any anything remarkable about the walls of the doors, except as you move from one wall to the next, you trip over something on the floor. Do you want to have a look? Yeah, sure. Yeah. What is it? It's a rope. It's oh. <laughs> a rope. 
And um, is it attached to some kind of trap door or? No, not at all. Do you want it's... to continue examining the walls? Yeah. Yes. And the walls. Do we look at the ceiling yet? Can we see the ceiling? Josh, you look but at But it the... is dark, isn't it? It's, it's dark. You can't really see much of anything on the ceiling. Can you stand However, on the chair and see anything on the ceiling? Okay. Is that Kirsty you are standing yeah. on? Yeah. <laughs> Kirsty stands on the chair to have a better look at the ceiling, but you, Kirsty, you don't notice anything. Oh. Uh, Josh, continue. Don't you think that we have our mobile so that we switch on and then see what is there in the dark? No, you don't. Unfortunately, you have nothing. <laughs> Your and are empty and you have no objects with you. You don't know why. Josh, you continue looking at the walls and yeah, yeah. An iron hook attached to one of the holes, one of the walls. Imperial. All right. Does it feel like the hook can do something, the rope would fit around the hook or something? Yeah, it looks like the rope would fit quite nicely around the, uh, the, the hook. Okay, so should we attach the rope to the hook then? Yeah. Attaching the rope to the hook? So. Yeah. Yeah, let's do that. Okay. Right, so what, what, can the rope be attached to the chair? Um, well, what are you going to do first? Are you going to attach the rope to the chair or to the hook? To the hook. Yeah, let's attach it. And okay. you're getting some tips, some tips, we some tips well. from the audience. Are these allowed or not? <coughs> yeah. Mm -hmm. uh, the audience is suggesting we should pull the rope. Yeah. But surely, the, well, we have to attach the rope to something else as well. Yeah. So if we attach the rope to the chair, then maybe we can pull the chair. Okay. Investigate the dim light. Yeah. So is just to light? just to see that I've um, I've got things right. You've attached the rope to the hook. You've kind of. I'm imagining you've looped the rope around the hook. And then it reaches the chair. Okay. Did we, we looked under the chair already, didn't we? Well, we did. Um, what's, it, what's it attached to the floor with? Right. You see, looking carefully under the chair, that the chair is bolted to the floor. But there does seem to be some kind of trapdoor or something. Ah, okay. So okay. we attach the rope to the chair and then pull it backwards. Right. Use, using the hook as a pulley system. Yeah. Well, Shall we fun. all pull together? Yeah, yeah, yeah let's, let's do all. that. <laughs> to open the door. Uh, that... Pull everyone. <laughs> as you, Maybe as, you the trap. Attaching, as you start attaching the rope to the chair, the other end of the rope, you realise that actually the, the chair moves backwards quite easily, but not in the direction of the hook, the other oh. direction. Mm. So when you push the chair in the other direction, a trapdoor opens, but the chair is attached to it. So the chair falls down, but it's mm -hmm. attached to the trapdoor. Now there's an open trapdoor. Okay. Upstairs. Leading down. down using the rope, but attaching it to the hook first. How All long right. is the rope? Well, you drop the rope. It's attached. It's looped around the hook, but you drop the end of the rope down into the trapdoor. Ah. And uh -huh. you hear the rope hit the floor. So uh, it you go down first. Am I, going, am I going down first? Does the trap door I, I open? Go down first. <laughs> Does the trap like door open? Climb down the rope. I push Josh. <laughs> <laughs> and I grab hold of the rope just in time. Okay. Down the hole. And Josh carefully... Recklessly slides down the rope. Slides down the rope. You get rope burn on your hands though, Josh. Oh, dear. Um, Can you see anything, Josh? <laughs> And you, uh, what's down there? And you tell everybody else to join you. Yeah, come on down, it's great. <laughs> okay. And we all climb down now. You're now in another room. 
Okay. You're in the middle of a room, a small room. It's dark in here as well. But in this room, there's a door on each of the walls. The walls seem to be different colours, but in the dark from where you are in the middle of the room, it's difficult to see what the exact colours are. You could probably see what the colours, a wall, what colour a wall is if you walk closer. And each of the doors seem to be painted the same colour as the wall. What do you how many, want to do? How many of us are there and how many doors are there? There's four doors and... There are four walls, four doors. And how many of us are there? I think there are five. Five, five, five of us. Right, so I stay in the middle and everyone else goes to one of the doors. <laughs> <laughs> okay. So okay, I'll, I'll go okay. towards one. And I'll go to another one. And I'll go to the I'll other go to one. The one. <laughs> Yeah, he's in the middle. Okay, so uh, let's see. Eleni, the wall yes. that you're at is orange and the door is the same color. All oh, right. That's if, if you if we if we're looking at a plan of the room, uh, then you're at the far wall. Um, Eleni. If we're looking at a plan of the plan of the room and you're at the wall on the left, it's black and the door's black as well. Okay. Uh, Sharon, are you at a wall as well? I'm presuming yeah. you are. You're at the wall if we're looking at a plan on the right and it's green. And Ravuti, you are at the other wall, the remaining wall, and it's yellow. And the, the door is the same colour of the wall. Color is the wall. Mm. <clears throat> Orange, green, yellow. What was the other color? Black. 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 No, we don't want to go through a black door. Um, can we touch the door and push yeah, it? You, you can touch the door. You push it. It doesn't seem to move. It seems to be um, solid. Does it, it have a keyhole? Like a door. There's no keyhole. Is there, anything else in the the Is there anything else in the room? There may be something else in the room, but you'd need to explore it because it's dark. Now, is there anything on the wall on at the side of the door? Nope. There's nothing on the wall at the side of the door. It's plain. Right. Can, can we explore the room then? Yeah. You start exploring the room and Lenny in the corner you find a pair of scissors. <laughs> and Sharon, when you move towards the opposite corner to Eleni, you find a piece of paper. <sighs> I'm going to have a better look at the okay. piece of paper. Yes. So I pick up the piece of paper. What's written on it? There's nothing written on it, but there are. There do seem to be some symbols on I the. I think we paper. need to cut the paper where the symbols are. Maybe I'm supposed to cut it in uh, four pieces. Okay, Sharon. I think you've got the scissors. Is that right? No, well, I've Eleni, got the scissors. I've got the paper, and it only has the scissors. Okay. Yeah. yeah. We can you try cutting it in four pieces. Do you think you cut it in four, or just where the pictures are? So that a cross comes out in the middle. Yeah. I would start with the cross and then go further. Yeah, we can always go further afterwards. Because you can't uncut something, but you can. Yeah, you're probably <laughs> right. So I'll just uh, fold it in half and okay. cut uh, where the scissor marks are. Okay. So, so that then. <laughs> yeah, have we looked all around the room yet? Have we crawled around the room everywhere? Yeah. Eleni, while, while you're cutting the, paper, the cross um, with the scissor marks. Josh is on all fours, crawling around the room, exploring it really well. He doesn't find anything else. Um, but you've got rope burns on your hands and now your knees are sore, Josh. <laughs> uh, I like to get dirty. Right, so Eleni, you cut the paper down the lines and as you're cutting through and you're sort of moving a little bit, you see this, when you look through the paper, depending on where you point it, you see strange things that you oh. don't see in the room otherwise. It's a magic piece of paper. 
It looks like it could be if magic exists. <laughs> Which so what, what kind of things do I do? Do I say? Right. Well, let's have a look, shall we? You seem oh. to be able to see some through the hole, but depending on what you where, which wall you pointed at, it changes. So maybe I can say what's behind the walls. Yeah, which wall do you want to point it at? I want to point it to the wall I was uh, in the first place, the orange one. The orange wall. So when you look through the hole and it's pointed to the orange wall, you see a high rise building, a skyscraper in the distance behind. It's almost as if the door was open, and in the distance behind the, uh, through the paper, you see a high rise building, a skyscraper in the distance, at least 20 stories high. Okay. Uh, so now I would like uh, to look at all the walls. Okay. So you point the paper at the black wall, okay. and you can see a forest in the distance with lots of trees. All right. When you point the paper at the green wall, you see the same wall of the room and the door, but there's something different about the door. You can see a door handle. <gasps> a door handle? Yeah. And oh. the, finally, the yellow wall, when you look through the paper um, at the yellow wall, you see the sea in the distance. There's a ship sailing on the waves, and it looks like it's a cruise ship. Okay. Can we operate the handle? Let's try. Yeah. Right. Is that Kirsty trying to open try. the door? Yeah. So Kirsty, you put your hand through the paper to reach the handle of the door, is that right? Yeah. If you put your hand through the paper, and strangely enough, although you without looking through the paper, you can't even see a handle or feel a handle. When you put your hand through the paper, you can feel a handle and you see, it looks like you could actually open the door if you wanted to. Go on then. Open, open the, the door. door. Open the door. <laughs> <laughs> Go, Kirsty. <laughs> you open the door and it seems like the door opens not just in the paper, but outside when you're not looking at the paper as well. And you can walk through into the next room, which I'm presuming you do. Um, yeah. 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 You walk through the door and find yourself in a small patio with a fountain. Oh. Now, in this room, there's a, another door at the end of the patio, but it seems to be locked with a combination padlock. And in front of the door stands a man holding a pile of books. What do you do? Say hello. <laughs> okay, you, you greet the man, you say hello to the man, but he doesn't seem to say anything or do anything. He's just standing there with a pile of books. Oh, got an ignorant person here. Mm. You, you, um, you try and take the top book off the pile. Who is, who is trying to take the top book off the pile? I am. Sharon. I am? Mm. Not Sharon. Okay. That was Sharon, was it? Yeah, that was Sharon. So Sharon, you, you move towards the man and raise your hand to try and take the top book off the pile oh, and the man, geez, walks, go. the man walks forward and he actually hands you the whole pile of books. <laughs> you take pa Paola has said in the chat that the 715 is written above the door frame. Yeah, let's try that on the padlock. But, but you've got, Sharon has got a pressing problem here is that the man is trying to hand her a pile of books first. What are you going to do, Sharon? I'm not going to take them. You're not going to take them. So you don't no. take the books. You avoid taking the books from him. So he places the books in a pile on the floor and goes back through the room that you, the door through that you entered the room, the patio in, and closes the door. So he's gone. Can we open the door again? No. So we're stuck in here now. You're stuck in the patio now with a pile of books on the floor and a door with a padlock on it. Could we try 715 on the padlock or should we have a look at the books? Well, we can do both, can't we? Mm. Okay. Try the number first. Books and you do the padlock. 
point that one book each. How many books are there? You can count, can you, Josh? Four, six, eight, no. Well, just about. I can't see is the problem. So my, right, okay. 20, 20 odd books. That's, that's four each or something. 17. 17. 17 books. Um, okay, who's who's look, who's trying to put 715 into the uh, padlock? Okay, I'll do it. So Josh, you, you key in 715 to the padlock, but um, the door doesn't open, the padlock doesn't open. The others are looking at the room, the books. Can we, can we look at the books? Yeah. Uh, do yeah. the books do the books have numbers on them? There's a little piece of white paper on the yeah. corner of each book. You're right. Each of the books has a code number on the spine. The books okay, also so. have to be about escape rooms. There's one called My Struggle to Escape the, the Room, <laughs> for example. Do That's you want ironic. to have a what are the others called? Um, <laughs> All 17. A compendium of escape room games. Puzzles for escape rooms. What's the seventh one down called? That one is called The Great Escape. <laughs> <laughs> We're not going to look at that one. <laughs> you have a look at that one. No. And, and what... Gosh, Josh, she well, else says that try try zero one seven as well while you're there with the lock. Oh, okay, I'll try zero one. Seven. You try zero one seven, but but it doesn't work, guys. Okay. Um, now, Josh, what's the code number on the seventh book down? The seventh book down doesn't have a code number. It's the only book without a code number. And what's the code number on the first book? The first book, the code number is 123. Let's try that then. Yeah, try that. You you try, if that doesn't work, we'll go for number five. You try 123 and it doesn't work. Okay, what's the code for 15? <laughs> 15, the code is 0, sorry, 015. Right. How about the seventh book, first page, fifth line? No, wait, wait, wait. The, seventh, the seventh book doesn't have a number. The first book was one, two, three. What's the fifth book? No, no but well, we, I, well, I'm, I'm, I've got voices in my head telling me what to do. <laughs> so the seventh book, first page, fifth line. Can we follow that one up? Mm. Is there anything on the fifth line of the seventh? Josh, while everybody is puzzling with what numbers to put in and codes and stuff. You actually open the book, the seventh book, the one without a number, and you see scribbled in pen on the front page, the number 973. There we go. 973, right. So shall I share that with everyone? Someone else can try putting it in, just in case it's dangerous. So if I remember, if I heard you correctly there, you're keying in 973 into the the, the lock, are you? I'm, I'm suggesting someone else keys it. <laughs> Very <laughs> brave as usual. So does anyone do that? I can try that. Okay, so you key in 973 into the book and the door opens and you're free. Yay! <laughs> well, done. Well, done. well done, well done everybody. <laughs> So well done, everybody. So uh, we're kind of halfway through that. That's an example of escape room game. Now, basically, um, it's uh, intended as an example of, of just to show you what you can do. You can. It's basically just a story um, with the teacher grading the language for the audience or for the students. So you can make the language as difficult or as or as easy as you like. You can obviously. The vocabulary will depend on that as well. And so your design of the escape room, um, that part of your design of the escape room is, is, is interesting as well. So it's a mystery escape room with a minimal storyline. You could, you could make it a more um, extensive storyline to the one that I've done. Um, 
it's up to you really. I think, and as it stands, I think what you would do with students is you could do follow-up activities, which would include then writing their own narratives about what happened, how they escaped, what they did. They could write a report, for example, um, to the police saying that, you know, they were kidnapped and this is how they managed to escape and trying to describe it as well as they can so the police could find out what happened, all sorts of things like that. And because it's just involves a PowerPoint, it is actually originally something that I thought you can do with students actually in the classroom, um, speaking to them. But it also lends themselves very well to do um, in Zoom online, for example, or any, any other online platform. Um, I think where someone can talk. Obviously, we had five players. You don't have to have five players. You could do it with more players. What you would do is um, is you could have the students. Um, you can have a spokesperson, and the you have five groups, for example, and you can have each of the group talking to each other in turn about what they wanted to do. So there was a lot of negotiation. Um, as we went along about what people wanted to do, you know, Josh being very brave and um, and volunteering with other people, for example. Um, so this is a live listening escape room. Um, I think this one that I designed is just to show you the kind of things you can do. There wasn't any particular language point or learning outcomes in it other than um, you speaking to each other, listening to me, and trying to negotiate um, actions and telling me what to do. But you could actually design an escape room similar to this, but with a focus on particularly particular language, particular vocabulary, etc. cetera. Um, at least that's what I think you could do. I think the kind of length you're looking at is something uh, around the length of what I've done here, about 20 minutes or so. 20 to 30 minutes to complete doing this. As the teacher or the facilitator of the game, I think you need to really um, not make it too hard. We'll hope, keep in mind that the objective is to get students talking to each other and you can help them with that. While they're talking to each other, um, you could obviously write down errors and do an error correction focus at the end. Um, and I think um what else can i say about it i think now some of the things that you've that i you've done in the game require to sort of search an areas of the space as if you were doing it in a physical escape room game when you're designing a game there isn't any way that you can um you can really uh predict everything that is going to come up. So the books, for example, I didn't have a list of the titles of all the books or the numbers. I just had the, uh, a couple of examples and uh, the, the number that uh, opened the door and then the number on the, on, the, on the top of the door, which didn't open the door. So the idea is you will have to sort of um, make things up as, as you go along as well, depending on what students were doing. The same with some of the other rooms. Um, I think the important thing when it comes to designing puzzles is not make them too hard, because if you make them too hard, then the students will become really frustrated. They need to be puzzles which um, the students can do and thinking um, of the answers themselves and, and don't put any red herrings in there really, or not a lot, because that will just make the, the, the whole thing really complicated. I think it's important that you let the students actually be able to solve the game themselves. The other thing you can do, and I know Kirsty, I showed you a, a different escape room that was a lot longer, uh, a lot longer puzzle. Yeah, but um, I actually did that with my students the, <laughs> the other day. How did it go? It went really well. There were only two, two SL students. Um, oh, okay, great. And, and, uh, and they loved it. They absolutely loved it. <laughs> Excellent. Well, you could try this on them as well. Um, but I think what you could do is you could do make this a longer game and do one of the puzzles every week with them. So they get through um, a game. It could either be something you start a class with, something you end a class with or break up the class. 
um, rather than do it all at once, in which case you might only be spending like five or 10 minutes um, in a class doing part of this. That might be a way of, of getting students into class on time, et cetera, or giving them something a bit less intensive or less sort of book focused or whatever. So that's one way of doing it. Um, and when it comes to you uh, designing your own type of games and the slides for this are, are available um, and I'll give you a link to where you can get them from again in a minute. But what I would do is taking my lead from what Gary Motterham was talking about in yesterday in his session is that I think this idea of backwards design is important. Start with what you want the students to learn about, what the objectives or the learning outcome is, what is the language you want them to practice. Um, this lends itself particularly to speaking, I think, and learning. Um, so I'll have that in mind. Then I think it's important to have, even if it's very minimal, like I have, some kind of story or setting to it. Um, that is important because it sort of, uh, it captures students' imagination. And also, I think it also, when it comes to you doing follow-up follow -up activities, writing activities, or, or anything else you think is worth doing with them, um, it gives a lot more sort of raw material for them to work with. Uh, the puzzle design, I think, as I said before, it shouldn't be too difficult. It should also be a puzzle design that will encourage people to talk to each other. So the students need to be negotiating and coming up with ideas of how to solve the puzzle. That's the whole point of this. Uh, so you really want to maximize the time learning or practicing the language with the puzzle design. And don't make them too difficult because actually the language, using the language is already a difficulty. So I think, you know, you don't want to make it um, extra difficult for, for students to actually uh, have, you know, particularly difficult puzzles. You can find all sorts of puzzles um, or you can make them up, adapt, adapt the ones that I did, for example. The other thing I think it's very important to do is check that it's not, you've not just designed something that is a lot of fun, but actually doesn't provide uh, a lot of learning for students. So you really have to have your eyes on the prize, if you like, which is you want them to have fun, but you want them to learn what you have planned them to learn. So the learning outcomes, which is why I think you would start with those first. And then I recommend play testing uh, because you might not spot something. So play it with friends or family or someone else, um, try it out, or even just, you know, leave it a day or two and then try it out yourself and sort of uh, see if you can spot things that might be improved upon. It doesn't have to take very long to design. Um, you know, you've seen that a lot of these puzzles, like there's just one simple image. I think an image helps if you're doing this kind of puzzle um, and this kind of story to put it all together. Um, so it doesn't actually, have to take very long. Um, actually, before I go on, any questions about this so far or any comments that people want to make? I know people are mentioning things in the chat room. Take the mic or... One thing that uh, I've mentioned is that, that I love about this approach is the fact that it's, all, it's just one picture and yeah. it's you describing everything. So it could easily be done if you're in the classroom, just drawing a picture on a whiteboard. Yeah, definitely. The whole point of this is something that is very simple to prepare, simple to, to do. As you say, you don't even need the images that I use. You could write on a whiteboard. You could draw on a whiteboard if you could do drawing. I'm not, so I wouldn't do that. But, <laughs> but yeah, I think the important thing is just to capture students' imagination and get them involved in using the language, really. Uh, I think earlier on in the chat, someone mentioned that it seemed a little bit like Dungeons and Dragons. If anyone has played Dungeons and Dragons, it's exactly true. It's the kind of thing you do sitting around the table, people listening to what the dungeon master does uh, or says, and then saying what you would do um, in the space. So it's very similar, really. Okay, so that is one type of live listening escape room game that you can do online with students. I'm going to share with you uh, another one. And sorry, Kirsty, and anyone else who was at my session earlier in the week. This, this one was different, but this you've seen before. And this Michelle Wogan, who is part of a symposium today, um, created. And what I like about it, 
I'm not going to actually have a look at it now. Or should I actually? Do we have time? I think we might have time. So let me have a look. Um, it's, so let me, hopefully you can see this. What it is, is it uses a tool called ThingLink. And you take a 360 degree photograph, which you can find online or you can take your own. Um, and Michelle has created um, a self-access escape room game. So the idea is for you to move on, or it's not really a, a room here, but the idea is to solve puzzles um, and tasks and actually move on. It's a 360 degree photo, which I can spin around. And you'll see there are hotspots, as they're called, that Michelle has placed. The obvious place to start is I with information. So hopefully you can see that. Start here. And it says, welcome to Save the Planet Interactive Adventure. Explore a scene of puzzles and clues. Complete the numbered puzzles in each scene before you click on the arrow to go to the next scene. Good luck. So here we've got the arrow, which takes you to the next scene. And what I like about this particular escape room that Michelle has done is that it's all around what could be a unit of the book on the environment. It's got reading here, so you could actually adapt text from a book if you want. It's got reading. It's got some puzzles that take, that are done in um, other websites that you then go back to this. There's a video about sustainable development goals and all sorts of other things you can add. So I think it's quite a clever way of making uh, the topic of the environment into a game, really, but with a focus on, uh, on language learning tasks. And um, that's something I recommend you check out and try your own if you find something that um, students will work. It's good as well because although you could do it with students live, this is a kind of um, activity that students can do on their own. And yes, Joe, it's free as well. ThingLink is free. Um, and so it could be something you have up your sleeve, either to do it and get students speaking if you're doing it live, but it could be your plan B if it fails, if your connection fails, for example, when you're, when you're teaching the students, you could ask them just to do it themselves and have some, you know, follow up writing, etc. As a, as a way of um, doing. So that's the other type of online digital escape room game. Now, I'm going to open up the floor to questions and comments in a minute. Um, and for people to share if, if anyone has any other examples or ideas of, of how to use escape rooms uh, in language for language learning and teaching, then you can do it. But before I do that, I'll just draw your attention to a website, um, a blog that uh, myself, Michelle, and two other colleagues based in different parts of the world used for the TESOL Electronic Village Online session that we did on escape room games. And they have all sorts of things there. Um, all sorts of different types. There are ideas of how to turn your live classroom into a, an escape room game, digital escape room games. And also another thing which is worth mentioning is that there are a lot of ready-made, obviously you have to buy them, but there are a lot of ready-made escape room board games, which are quite interesting. Now, many of these, uh, the level wouldn't be appropriate for beginners without extensive um, adaptation. But some of them, can be used and the puzzles etc can be adapted or even the things that you find in there can be adapted uh, if you ever get to the point if we ever get to the point of actually teaching face to face again in a physical room so that is about all um, I think I wanted to share um, there is one more thing from the front page of the blog, there's a link to join the community that we set up for the EVO course, um, which is using a tool called Slack. It's free to join. Um, I'm not going to put the link in here, but you can get the link from the um, from the front page of the blog. Um, I'll make it a little bit of a task, I think. Uh, and 
then you'll be connected with a, a reasonably large 106 people i think or a bit more now group of educators who are looking at escape room games and sharing uh, information and ideas so if it is something that you think you want to do and you want to share with other teachers then i'll recommend you join that uh, that community and that brings me to the end so I'm going to open up the uh, the floor if anybody wants to make any comments or ask any questions about anything you've seen today or about escape rooms in general, then please do so. I see some people have already started sharing ideas, which is great. I'm going to make sure I grab that chat. I posted in the chat about, uh, I think Michael Birch, who's here, mentioned it to me originally. Um, uh, on Steam, you've got quite a lot of games. Um, I was, uh, it told me about one called uh, 101 Rooms, which um, I've been using with Kinto and Sexto, or fifth and sixth year. Um, and basically, they, I screen share, and they can see the game, and they tell me what to do. And... Um, we go through the doors and basically for the two months that we've been on lockdown uh, I think we're up to room 100 we're up to room 83 or something like that so every class we do a little bit more and it works really well yeah that's an excellent idea Kirsty. I think yeah I didn't talk about them today but yeah digital escape room games and there are lots of them um, unfortunately they used to there used to be hundreds of them using Flash, but Flash has become something which people don't have access to, but you've got them on, on um, apps, so you've got them on your phones, etc. But also there are digital escape room games that you can play through Steam, if anyone uses that game system, or even on websites as well. And you'll find, if you go to the blog, that some of those have been shared on there as well. And then it's a case of you, you would just share your screen and then you can actually do the same kind of thing, but it's more interactive. You do need to have a, a better, the students do need to have a better connection to be able to do that. But I think it's another good way of using them as well. I'm just gonna look in the chat to see if there are any questions. Josh, do you wanna talk a little bit about this scaffolding you mentioned in the chat what you mean like really talk turn my microphone up yeah really talk <laughs> um I, I, yeah i mean I, i'm sure i found some websites that were kind of to help people make their own um escape rooms for parties and stuff like that which kind of took people through steps of sort of checking that they did it in a sensible way and i wondered whether any of whether you knew of anything like that that would be accessible enough to kind of intimate label students i can see a lot of having you know playing a few games and then challenging students to make some of their own games could be a really productive um creative activity yeah i'm just trying to remember actually that there are some of those and again people have shared um links to them in our community and on the website um, lock, lock, paper, scissors actually put um, at the beginning of the um, uh, the lockdown, they put an escape room uh, template on their website and invited people to make their own escape rooms and send them in to lock, paper, scissors .co I think it's what, what is it dot co dot co. Yeah, I'll put that in the chat room. Um, the link in the chat room. Yeah, that's blocked on my computer for some reason. <laughs> it's too game. -like. Yeah, if you use a British Council computer that I'm using at the moment, it's blocked. Uh, yeah, there, there are others as well, but actually, it, the popularity of escape room games in education is increasing all the time. So things keep popping up and people are posting ideas on blogs, etc. One of the things with this, of having this community is actually to, to share um, links to things that they come along so i will have a bit of a look because i think what you've just described josh is something i have seen um quite a bit of actually 
and the the board game that I suggested, one of the board games that I suggested, this one here, the escape room in a box one, it's too complicated for anything other than advanced learners, but the supporting website has a way of turning the, has a template for turning a, an escape room into a, um, a party. And that can be easily adapted with its own script for learners. And it kind of comes with little locked boxes as well, which is quite, quite cute. Okay. Any more questions or comments or suggestions from anyone? This is fantastic, Graham. There's just so much good stuff here. Thanks, Matt. It's magic. <laughs> it really is. Um, and and uh, that, uh, that Seven Doors game that we played in the school was really nice because you didn't have to plan the game. You just say, here's the obstacle. How do you get around it? There's a really angry troll uh, who's throwing giant donuts. Boom. And you have your seven-year-olds come up with a solution and they act it out. Yeah. And that, that's great. I mean, there, this is just a variation on, on other types of oral lesson plans, aren't they? There was like, you know, the, the urban myths one, the, um, the lateral thinking puzzles. This is just another, another way of doing it. But one of the things that might be more motivating for students with this is because with escape room games actually being very popular, um, then it, you know, the students might be excited to do them, especially if they're teenagers or preteens. Grant, could you please could you please post the link to Save the Planet? Uh, Paula Morel asks, what was the link to Save the Planet? Uh, yeah, let me do that. Uh, Thank you. What I'll do is I'll I'll post the link in the chat. Here we go. But also, okay, thanks. Let me share my screen again. Now, the slides for this are available here. So I'll put that link in the uh, in the chat room as well. So that's great. Thank you. Anyone who wants to download this with all the links and the game. And there's actually a script for the game as well, uh, which I use, which you could build upon. There are typos in the script, so apologies there. But so you can download the slides from there. Okay, that's beautiful. Thank you very much. If there are any more questions, you can post questions in the chat box. So Graham has got like two minutes to answer any, any questions. Or we could just sit in silence for two minutes. Yeah, everybody's saying thank you. Okay, well, thank you everybody for coming. And um, I hope it's been useful and interesting and it was great to hear that you've already used what you saw uh last week with your students that's great let me know if you if you use any more okay. this was fantastic thank you graham and thanks everybody for staying with us stay tuned because we're starting the next session right after this one and uh,